Okay, so welcome to the uh, recorded session. Sad that we don't have you here, Jonah, here in, well, here is right now Finland, but here when we will show this, we'll be here in Brussels. So uh, let's, let's, let's do it virtually then, shall we, Jonah? Sounds good. Yeah, so, so the topic here is uh, AI or vector databases and Maria Dibi's uh, initiative around this. So Maria Dibi, Foundation has been approached by several of our members about uh, what's our take on, on, on vector databases and, and uh, what's our role. And uh, as a uh, consequence there, we've started an initiative together with you. Uh, so my first question here, Jonah, is what's your take, what's PLC's take on, on vector databases and AI in MariaDB? Sure. So when it comes to vector databases and the upcoming AI ML applications that require vectors, uh, it's really important to us, uh, and we believe the market based on everyone we've talked about, that MariaDB contains support for vectors uh, and that uh, when we look down the road, people are really combining vector search with a lot of the standard relational database scalar search type techniques. Uh, so having a tightly integrated uh, vector search component is really important to Maria DB's future. Yeah, so one keeps reading these things is is the database space for vector databases already full? And I think that that's a valid comment, valid question. Is there any reason to have a specialized vector database? I would argue no. I think you would you would uh, need to store the vectors in the databases that you're using anyway. Is that aligned with your thinking? So I think there will always be special purpose databases that are, you know, pushing the boundaries of whatever algorithms uh, there are uh, to be fast in that one use case. But I think one thing that we've learned with relational databases is that everything comes around again uh, and that uh, while it's easy to pioneer a new technology in a special purpose database and those generally get a lot of interest at first, uh, people don't eventually, uh, from a business standpoint, want to keep using those special purpose databases uh, because it involves a lot of governance problems, security problems that are related to having to duplicate that data that's already in their relational database into the special purpose vector databases. And so while they're really hot at first, and that's what I think we've seen in the market uh, when people say that the space is already crowded, uh, is that those are all special purpose databases. And when you look, uh, Sanity is starting to return to, to businesses and they say, okay, well, we want vector search, but we don't want to have to copy our data everywhere and create all these data engineering pipelines. We just want to be able to use the data in the database that we already have. And that's where MariaDB's vector comes in. So is the time now the right uh, time for this? I think there's a too early and a too late thing. So uh, MariaDB shouldn't probably be or have been the place to, to pioneer the storage of vectors, then then it's, it's hot and you and nobody really knows exactly what one needs. Uh, so hence, one uses a special purpose one. And uh, it could also be too late because everybody else has then already stored their vectors in some other relational database. So mm -hmm. what do you think about the timing here? Are we too early or too late or just right? Or what's your thinking? Yeah, so in the you know innovation adoption curve, I think we're actually in the right place uh, because all of the special purpose databases came out and a lot of new algorithms were created to optimize that approximate nearest neighbor search. Uh, then Postgres was the first to really incorporate it into a relational system. And now uh, the advantage that I think we have is that the hyperscalers uh, really iterated uh, Postgres's implementation to the point where now it hasn't really changed much in its like functional approach. Uh, so while algorithms can change, we now have sort of a model that's battle tested uh, in the relational database, database space that we can just piggyback off of. And we don't need to go through the you know early parts of that innovation curve where it was changing. Uh, now we know sort of what everybody expects and we can just go on from there. So I think we're at just the right place uh, in that curve. I would concur with that. And I would sort of compare this to when open source uh, took the database uh, market. So then 
uh, databases were, were very well defined and, and there was a standard. However, I don't really think that there is any proper standard. I think you, you're right in saying that it has converged. One knows what the task of a vector database is. Do you ever see true standards emerging here in, in what, what one expects out of a vector database? Um, I would say, you know, if you look at the SQL standard and things like that, uh, and how long it took for property graphs to be added to the SQL standard, uh, even after they became pretty widely used in the industry, uh, I mean, I, I think vectors may at some point become part of a standard, but I can't see it happening in 10 years. Yeah. So so uh, what's the core part that you see that like one, one needs some kind of a minimum viable uh, implementation of, of, of vectors? So what's the, the true bare, bare bones minimum uh, by which one could then say, OK, so we have a vector storage engine or, or a way to store vectors? Mm hmm. Well, so, I mean, obviously the, the storage of the vector itself would be uh, the minimum, uh, but for a real practical use case, you have to have one of the uh, index types that is relatively fast. Again, you don't need to be as good as the special purpose databases, nor should you really try to be. Uh, but, you know, supporting HNSW or one of the newer, you know, disk AMNs, um in terms of performance would be good and that really just uh i, I mean the, the real balance there is how many vectors are going to be stored in the database and i think going back to your earlier question about where we are in the adoption curve uh it does set us up really well where uh, every one of the major implementations supports hnsw uh, and that's a good general purpose algorithm and so if we shoot for that as a V1, then I think we're, you know, well-placed uh, to meet the number of vectors that people are currently storing in relational databases and uh, doing it correctly, uh, we will be able to replace that algorithm in the future, so. So um, one thing that I'm pondering a lot when we're trying to coordinate what people expect out of this vector uh, storage is, uh, do we like we don't do the training we don't do the ai part as such we do the storage but uh, a use case that i would like to see is that everybody talks about chat gpt or or other such such models you can't really train a model from scratch uh, that easily because the the amount of data is huge uh, but i would like to see a, a use case where you can create um, a sub model uh, based on only the data that you have, and, and uh, you might use some other model, uh, existing model that already is trained to vectorize the data. Is, is that a use case that you see as well as a prime one? Sure. So I, there's definitely use cases for fine tuning uh, those large language models, uh, and you know, from the vector search standpoint, uh, whatever vector we have in there is is searchable. Uh, but I do think that looking at the overall uh, AI ML space, uh, especially in the use of large language models, there's obviously fine tuning that can be done there. And then because vectors can really represent an embedding for anything, um, there's always more custom use cases for models that represent, you know, image represent, you know, computer vision, image representation, music representation, etc. Uh, so. I do think that once we have uh, vector search in the database, that that opens up the door to a lot of really creative use cases um, that we could also integrate with uh, that improve the overall database experience. So uh, at, at the point where I think we have not just a minimum viable um, vector search, but something that everybody can play, ar along, uh, play around with, I would, I would envision a situation where you can take um, what you have, uh, like your special data that you want to vectorize, be it pictures or text or, or whatever, and combine it with something that is already vectorized and store that. And, and you would do that with what you have in MariaDB. So that obviously then requires that there is some already trained model. So do you see that as being somehow an extra uh, plug-in storage engine plug-in uh, model or, or how would you build uh, an application where you need an already trained model 
and then on top of that, obviously the source code of MariaDB server, because the, the training aspect won't be part of, of this. Yeah, I think uh, there, I, I can see an integration component or a plugin in the server uh, that allows you to sort of auto vectorize uh, the data as it enters MariaDB um, against uh, basically probably a hosted model of some kind and where that model is hosted could either be you know on premises and private to the company uh like a, a private tune model or just private company model or uh hit something like you know open ai's apis with uh chat or the gpt models um so that you know basically the data is constantly being vectorized as you're adding it to the database or updating the database yeah, from the perspective of an NBA foundation, we would want to use something that doesn't um, uh, have just open in its name, but that would truly be open source as well. So I, I suppose that even that, that also in your vision, there would be multiple possible LLM models that one could plug in, some of which would obviously have to be open source in order to be hosted by us, but then also the open initiative, open interface to to things that are mostly open in name only uh, for vectorization. I uh, yeah, 100 agree, 100%. Yeah. So anything to add to this? I mean, does this describe roughly our our vision, joint vision of, of where we should be going? I believe it does. And I think it's a really exciting thing for MariaDB. And I really look forward to having it in the product. I think uh, it will enable our users to it to build a lot of really cool applications uh, and it'll just keep MariaDB going on top. Thank you, I agree. But next time be present face-to-face uh, -face and not just virtually. Promise me that, Jonah. Promise, Kai, promise. Good, thank you, Jonah. <laughs> Thanks.